back to Yvonne Combat. So today I'm actually going to go over very basic angles and of course I'm going to show you guys a little bit of the uses behind every one of these points. So as you guys can tell, we have a diagram. That way we can show you guys what way exactly it is that I'm actually going to be moving. And at the same time, it also kind of gives you guys a general overview or kind of like a general, I guess, visual of what exactly each angle could actually present to you guys. So the center line is where both fighters have the equal opportunity to actually land on one another. So this is where a lot of the great fights take place, you know, those back and forth fights, those fights where you guys are pretty much just standing in front of each other. From this position here, it's 50-50, a lot of great brawls happen, a lot of back and forth action, just for the mere fact that nobody really has a superior angle. So the center line is the beginning, and it makes, makes up for some pretty great, exciting back and forth fights. And if I really want to, step out of the center line and of course start to create an angle on my opposition, I could just take a slight step to the right this time, right? So I just simply take a slight step to the right and of course I'm in a position where I quote unquote have a superior angle if of course my opposition stays on the center line just for the mere fact that I pretty much avoid or stay a little bit on the outside of his left jab. And of course from this position maybe I can counter with an overhand right or a right cross over that left jab. There's no question about that. But one thing that I want you guys to remember is although yes I have this guideline right here, I want you guys to understand that this isn't really the only angle that you have going on to your right side. There's a bunch of little angles in between from the center line all the way to the most outer right portion of our diagram here. So there could be an angle right here, right here, right here, right here, and right here. So this position right here, you, could, you guys could slowly start moving on to this position right here, or you guys could just simply pivot, right? So you guys see this a lot with Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. He likes to pivot on the inside. Of course, if we're fighting another orthodox fighter. So from this position right here, he will actually pivot onto the inside. And from this inside, you know, sometimes he will actually throw like a left hook or a couple left hooks, some uppercuts, or maybe even some right hands. So this will actually be also on the outside of the left hand of the orthodox fighter. And from this position, you guys could actually land a couple punches if you guys wanted to as long as your opposition doesn't really uh, adjust quickly. And from this position, you know, you could throw, or you're free to throw a couple of punches, especially if you guys use this inside pivot when you guys are pretty much in a clinch position. There, you guys will actually have the advantage and of course be able to throw these short punches like the uppercuts and the hooks. All right, guys, so before we jump in with the example from Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, I'm gonna show you guys another example from Floyd Mayweather, how he used the inside pivot against Arturo Gatti. So right now, I'm actually gonna break it down for you guys step by step. So right now, first of all, let's draw this diagram. As you guys can see, both of these fighters are pretty much placed on the center line. And of course, what Floyd Mayweather wants to do is, of course, pivot out to his right side or step over onto the right side to end up on the outside of Arturo Gatti's left hand. So looking at it from Arturo Gatti's perspective, he knows that Floyd Mayweather will be moving onto his left side or the outside of his jab. So Floyd steps onto the right side, and as he's doing this, he also pushes Arturo Gatti's head down. In my opinion, this is very smart on behalf of Floyd Mayweather, just for the mere fact that Arturo Gatti kind of read the movement so he's also kind of taking a step to the right that way he could pretty much stay in line with, with Floyd Mayweather but Floyd Mayweather just utilized this movement for him to be able to carry on that angle that he wants to create for himself and at the same time make it difficult for Arturo Gatti to once again face him and at the same time it kind of adds like a little bit of a curtain so kind of blinds Arturo Gatti a little bit that way Floyd Mayweather could carry on with his movements and of course land these short punches so right now like I promised here is Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez so here you guys see Chocolatito and his opposition start at the starting point which is of course the center line. So just like Floyd Mayweather and just like how I explained before what the orthodox fighter wants to do against another orthodox fighter is end up on the outside of the opposition's left hand or his jab hand. The only way Roman Chocolatito will accomplish this is by stepping onto the right side. So right now you guys see him turn around or pretty much pivot his body onto the right side he ends up on the outside of his opponent's left hand and from this position he's free to carry on any punch he would like but unlike Floyd Mayweather instead of landing a combination he would just land this left hook so pretty much that's the angle you get as an orthodox fighter when going up against another orthodox fighter when you move on to the right side here starting back from the starting point you guys could also move on to the opposite side right so this is a little bit more useful when you guys are going up against a southpaw fighter st standing um, on the orthodox stance but at the same time, 
even though it's not really conventional wisdom because technically you're moving into the right side of your elven out port locks opponent you guys can also use it right so although yes uh, a lot of times what we teach you guys is pretty much textbook style but if you guys are already going up against an orthodox fighter you guys could just simply move towards the right side but try to stay on the outside of your opponent's right hand and then from this position right here if your opponent misses with that right hand and you're gonna be you're gonna pretty much be slipping your right shoulder onto the left side then of course from this position you can land a cross of your own and let's say like i was i was the opposition right and let's say i'm gonna throw a right cross and i miss right because you somehow stepped onto my right side being at the orthodox opponent so you guys pretty much avoid the right hand and if you guys watched that Triple G versus Canelo fight, you guys saw Canelo constantly moving towards his left side, right? To, or to, towards that right hand of Triple G during the first bout. So he would, talk, he would slowly, slowly, slowly get out of that right so hand. So pay very close attention to the on-screen action. Here you guys see Canelo Alvarez make Triple G miss with that right hand by simply going on to his left side. And here in the sequence, once again, Triple G will throw another right hand and Canelo Alvarez just neutralizes it the same way by going on to his left side. So one thing to take into consideration, although Canelo Alvarez is just simply moving on to his left side, he's also incorporating a lot of head movement and a lot of waist movement as well. You want to utilize as much head and waist movement as you possibly can just for the mere fact that you're moving towards the Orthodox Fighter's right cross, which in my opinion is probably the most devastating punch that the Orthodox Fighter has. So just take that into consideration because you're pretty much in the pathway of that right hand. So here you guys will see Canelo and Triple G stand in the center. So once again, I'm gonna actually draw the diagram for you. So here it is, the center line, right? Where everything is quite even. So right now, Triple G will throw that right hand. Canelo will just simply take a step to the left solely for the purpose of avoiding that right hand, right? So he wants to end up on the outside of Triple G's right hand or at the outside of Triple G's right side. So at the same time, you guys see that Canelo actually utilizes head movement in this clip just for the mere fact that in this freeze frame you guys kind of see him face the crowd so the only reason why he's facing the crowd is just for the mere fact that when Triple G threw that right hand Canelo pretty much rolled his head with that punch so that's why he's in this position but overall like I mentioned head and waist movement is very important for this movement in addition this will also give Canelo Alvarez some breathing room just for the mere fact that Triple G has to adjust his body for him to once again face Canelo and to either carry out a movement or to once again attack him. Canelo would actually you know keep keep his distance a little bit and then just kind of pivot or turn onto his left side and pretty much avoid the right hand of Triple G. There was an instance if I do recall correctly where he pretty much uh, makes Triple G miss with that right hand. He kind of like pivots, kind of steps out, and he kind of faints. Like he has the position to actually land on Triple G, but he kind of like like faints and just decides to like continue on with his movements. Okay, so here once again, Canelo will be moving on to his left side or on the outside of that right hand that Triple G will throw right now. So once again, Canelo Alvarez wants to be on the outside of Triple G's right hand, so he moves left. Triple G throws that right hand, and as you guys could tell, Triple G looks to be a bit off balance, but Canelo looks to be a bit off balance as well. So Canelo Alvarez will take control of this position right here. After Triple G threw that right hand, he will actually kind of stand in an open southpaw stance and he will actually land a couple punches on Triple G. And this movement was pretty much established the same way just by simply going onto the outside of that right hand that the Orthodox fighter, in this case Triple G, threw. Okay, so just like how I could just simply pivot onto the quote unquote inside by going onto the right side. I could also use something that Floyd used to utilize a lot in his bout, which is of course the check hook. So as an opposition is actually coming in, whether it be he be throwing a right hand or a left hand, Floyd Mayweather would actually check hook and kind of swing his body uh, towards uh, his right side, towards his left side in this case, and he will actually end up on the outside of the Orthodox Fighter's right hand, and of course he could continue to carry out carry out his movement. So if you guys want to kind of um, have a little bit of a tactic when you guys are going towards that left side or pivoting towards that left side or the outside of the Orthodox Fighter's right hand, of course you know throwing that check hook, right? Boom, check hook, and boom, you're in a position where you guys that's where you pretty much avoid any incoming punches by you know your orthodox opposition i'm not gonna get too much into detail with the check hook just for the mere fact that i actually have a video on this check hook coming soon so the check hook itself leaves you on the outside of the right hand of the orthodox fighter which of course 
is pretty much moving towards your left side if you are the orthodox fighter that's throwing the check hook so pretty much that's what this check hook is utilized for just in case you guys just simply don't want to move towards that left side slowly and of course if my opponent's a southpaw fighter i'm actually moving towards his right side or on the outside of his right side which is good for many reasons just because of the fact that I don't get tagged by the straight left and it gives me the, the position to have lead foot dominance and of course land a straight right of my own down the middle if I have the opportunity or the opportunity presents itself. Just take this into consideration. You guys don't necessarily have to use it, you know, sometimes certain positions could actually get you guys in trouble, especially if all your life you grew up, you know, with conventional wisdom, you know, maybe it's not the most smartest thing to actually go on to the right side or I mean to the left side as an orthodox fighter when going up against Another orthodox fighter, just for the mere fact that the orthodox fighter may connect you with a straight right that may knock you down or knock you out. So if you guys do want to follow these guidelines, go on ahead. If you guys learned something new, that is down below. So anything that you guys need to know about us, there's going to be a bunch of links in the description box. There you guys will actually see our team, Insta team Instagram, our personal Instagrams. Right now our website isn't really set up. We have a little bit of a problem, but there you guys will see all of our contact information maybe we we could set something up and work together in the near future so yeah man pretty much that would be it thank you